Hi everyone, good to be with you again. Um, we've been looking at John chapter 6 and we're working our way through the story of Jesus walking on the water. So today we're looking at verses 18 and 19. And they say this, A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they'd rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. John's account of this is a uh, terrifying experience is remarkably short. He really doesn't give us much of an idea as to how these men were feeling. They were being tossed about on this little boat, um, probably terrified for their lives. So it's really good to read Mark's Gospel for a little bit more colour about this story. So Mark chapter 6 verses 47 to 50 says this. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he, Jesus, was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Now, when you read those words that he was about to pass by them, you might think, well, why would he do that? These guys were his friends and they were in trouble. And he was just going to walk past. The original Greek words that were used in that to say he was going to pass them by are par erkomai. They mean exactly the same thing that we read about when God put Moses in a cleft on a rock as he passed by Moses. And the same thing when, when he passed by Elijah on a mountainside. He did that so that Moses and Elijah could experience God passing them by. It was God revealing himself. They could stand in his presence, stand in his glory and know him. So far from intending to leave these disciples to some kind of watery fate, Jesus was revealing the glory of God to them. He was showing them that God can do anything, that he has mastery over the elements, that water became solid under his feet. He showed them that the storm abated when, they climbed into, when he climbed into the boat with them. And that his peace settles over the most in terrifying moments in life. Just as Moses and Elijah were allowed to stand in the presence of God, so these 12 terrified disciples got to sit in a boat with him while they completed their journey across the lake. You know that thanks to the sacrifice that Jesus made for each of us on the cross, we also get to sit in God's presence. We get to know that all-pervading peace. And we can be filled with the same power that Jesus had. All we need to do is to receive him, just like the disciples did when they welcomed him into the boat. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, would you come right now and fill each one of us with your peace? Lord, we welcome you to come and fill us with your presence. We invite you, Lord, to cleanse us of all that is unclean, of all the things that are, are displeasing to you. We ask, Lord, that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you'd work through us in all that we do today and forever. So we just say, come, Lord, come, Holy Spirit, and fill us now. We ask in your precious name. Amen. Have a great day.